Guys, welcome to week 37 of my journey to scratch. I am so excited for this one. I'm so excited to be sharing it with you guys. I got fit for new irons. And before we get to the fitting, I just wanna say a couple things. First, just a huge shout out to Mike Roush out of Sellingters in Roanoke, Texas, which is in the DFW area. He was recommended to me by my golf coach, Zach, and he sends all his students over there. So glad that I went to Mike. He was so, so good at what he does. He said it in the video, he doesn't make commission off of this. So he really doesn't care what he fits you into. He just wants to make sure that you, that you're happy with your purchase and that you you don't get any buyer's remorse and, and that you come out you know swinging a club that's really fit for you so huge shout out to him it was awesome to work with him I'll have all the ways to contact him down in the description below if you're interested in a fitting in the DFW area. Now for the fitting itself, uh, we started out with kind of a baseline measurement of what my current clubs are and what type of numbers they were producing. And then we went into picking out a shaft, which Mike was saying it's the most important part of the fitting and I wholeheartedly agree. It was absolutely insane how like from one shaft to the next, you can swing terribly to, to perfectly and you guys will see that. And then last but not least is picking the head, uh, who are we gonna be dancing with for, for the next few years. So yeah, without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the fitting. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please make sure to give me a like, subscribe if you're new and introduce yourself down below. I'll catch you guys at the back end of the video for some more announcements and I hope you guys enjoy it. Take care. I'm a little Go in there. Okay. Yeah. Good one, end on. Hit it solid, just left. Yeah. Yeah, let's look at numbers. Initially, my biggest complaint about your, your golf clubs is is probably the height more than anything on okay. my side of it. So the biggest thing that, that I see for you is your loft delivery and impact. So your loft delivery impact really determines two things, how fast the ball is gonna come off, and then secondly, how high it's supposed to go with the amount of spin that it's supposed to have. So initially, that club right there in your hands is 30 degrees, and your loft delivery impact is only 22 degrees. Now it's a good thing to lean the golf club, and you even spoke to it as you were working on hitting it higher, right? And I certainly wouldn't want to band-aid you, but initially with that seven iron, your loft delivery impact being 22, you're not carrying enough spin to get it to a good peak height. Gotcha. That's the biggest thing I see. Like, do I want to raise your launch angle too? Meaning the ball needs to come off in a higher window? Probably both, really. So, I, no, I don't want you to balloon it up in the air, but certainly right now, 16 degrees of launch is, is really on the low side. Okay. Launch, spin, or correlative numbers. So if it launched at 16 and you say, I like the window it comes out of, Mike, I don't, I don't want to see it any higher. Then we need to carry much more backspin than what we see. So right now, inside, your peak height's only 62 feet and a landing angle is 36. For gotcha. me, that is way too low. Okay. I really would want to raise that peak height up at least 20 feet in the air. Cool. And I'd want your landing angles to start to have fours in front of them. Gotcha. Uh, all your landing angles in the 30s. Uh, an ideal landing angle to be able to hold a green, go up front pins, anything you'd want to do would at least at, on the minimum side, probably be about 44 to 45. Okay. So I'm gonna do everything I can to, to say, let's get you in a product that launches a little higher or it needs to spin a little bit more than those I-500s. Cool. So those I-500s are distance irons and typically you're not really steep and cover it and lean and that kind of stuff. You are, you do hit down, but you hit down from the inside. So you're not gonna get a ton of backspin. These are your average numbers of shots you hit. It's very left bias on average. You hit that one shot that was just like psh, laser straight. I want to see that one happen more often. Uh, your ball speed's not going to get much faster. Unless right. we start to hit stuff that you deliver less loft to the golf ball than that one, you're not going to see ball speeds be faster than 109. I don't think you're here to say, I need to hit the irons farther, yeah. right? You need it more consistent. Right. Being able to rely on that one shot that you say, this is what it does, this is the height it gets to, this is the spin it creates, that's what I'd want to see. So ball speed's really good. It's not supposed to get faster than that. 109 is a good average ball speed, 108 and a half, good average ball speed. A launch angle needs to go up, brother. Cool. <laughs> um, so I, I'd want to raise your launch angle just a couple degrees, and your spin rate's the biggest thing that I want to change. That's Perfect. like those irons just, they don't spin. Cool. So we're gonna look at products uh, that hopefully impart a little bit more backspin on the golf ball for you, so it gives you a little more stopping power. Perfect. Yeah. All right, let's hit some stuff. Uh, the first part of this is they're starting with a head that I think uh, potentially needs to be the head you play. Of all those heads on my rack, this is the one that I think is maybe the best candidate for you. So I'm starting with that one. Cool. And why is that? 
This one is a Mizuno product. Okay. Mizuno makes a fantastic iron product that is built for consistency. So some of the club companies design their golf clubs to have some bells and whistles. Now bells and whistles are good for a lot of players, but they also can come with some downfalls with that. So with you, the current iron you play, the I-500, that is a distance iron that's a hollow cavity golf club. It's designed with a fast face. Okay. And that's the hot trend in golf is a lot of the companies are designing hollow cavity golf clubs that have faster faces because the game for the retail consumer that doesn't care about getting fit is all about distance. So everybody makes a distance iron, but Mizuno makes it a distance iron as well, but it tends to spin a little bit better. Cool. Their tagline is nothing feels like a Mizuno and this will feel like if you're at the North pole in terms of feel with those clubs, you don't, maybe don't know any better, this is gonna be the South Pole. Wow, okay. So your biggest complaint is heaviness, right? Yes. How do you feel like stiffness is for you when you swing those? Do they feel hard to swing? Um, do they feel okay or you don't know any better? I don't know any better, yeah. Okay, cool. I don't know any better. Well, that's like it'd be interesting to try a regular flex and seeing. Oh, we are definitely trying some regulars. Sweet. Yeah, I think I think for you, you kind of fit into like a firmer, regular profile. Okay. In terms of your sheer speed and what you do in your action. I never base somebody's flex of shaft just on sheer club head speed. That's just kind of a bad way to fit. Cool. Really what matters is what flex can you handle that controls the golf ball. Perfect. That, that matters. If it feels like a two by four when you swing it, it doesn't matter whatever it says on it, S, R, X, Senior, if it doesn't feel right when you swing, you're not going to deliver it well. First candidate. Good one there, dude. Hello. That one felt nice. Oh. That one felt real nice. Now we're getting a little feel for her. I'll just give the first one a couple extra swings. It feels different. It looks different. Lots of different things happening. So cool. I'll never start judging how clubs perform until we get kind of a feel for what's going on. Good miss. Initially a lot tighter on the misses. Yeah. Did you make it? Oh. Now, if you make it, the fitting's over. YouTube channel, <laughs> sorry. That's what you got to buy. Really good. Yeah, those all felt really, really good. Like really, really good. Shaft stiffness, anything you notice better, worse? Um, thing? no, I felt about the same. Okay, good. Yeah, I felt about the same. I didn't feel like it was lagging way behind me or anything like that. Okay, cool. Um, Staying with you as you swing, you feel like, uh, yeah. okay, good. I felt like I knew where my club head was. Good. Yep, that's important. Let's see two more. Cool. Because this, we spend more of the time of the fitting on, because this is the most important part of performance of the off club. Cool. Because we said before... It's like a flavor of ice cream when it comes to heads. What do you like to look of? What do you like to feel of? And what's telling us the numbers, right? Sweet, sweet. Oh, that was ugly. Really good there. Yeah, that one felt nice. So your draws look a little tighter too. They don't, it doesn't look like it's just slinging. Yeah. Where that's the other thing I saw about yours is they kind of like slung draw. Yeah, 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 I agree. Okay. Tail of the tape. Same exact ball speed, almost to a tenth of a degree, right? Awesome. Raise your launch by two. I told you like two degrees, I'd be happy. Hell yeah. Two degrees. Fantastic. I want more spin. There's more spin. So this club comes with a weaker loft than what you're currently playing, and you're hitting it the same distance, wow. right? So, well, that's a heck of a start. You're hitting it more middle, not quite as toe side anymore. Okay. Line go perfect. Brother, I think you just need probably a standard line. Sweet. So I said, I'd love 20 feet of peak height, we got 14. Not bad. I oh, wonder your landing angles have fours in front of them. Oh, look at that. Nice, nice. Great start. Cool. Awesome. Next shaft. What's your initial impressions of the look, the feel? It looks fantastic. Yep. It looks really, really nice. Good oh, that pass. Felt really nice. Yep, good. I like, need really, to really nice. Change the tag because I'm dumb and handed you. The right shaft, the wrong tag. That was a good start. It's launching high, yeah? 
Yes, they're all gonna launch higher. <laughs> <laughs> Good pass. I like the profile. I maybe don't like the flex. Okay. We'll come back to this one. So we lost a little bit of our... Gotcha. Right? Yeah, so the yeah, very yeah. first shaft, <clears throat> in terms of quantifying what it is from that company, that was a firm regular. Cool. And that money taper light was also a regular, but didn't play as firm as the first shaft, so you lost a little bit of your directional control. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really good. That was a good one to end on. That was nice. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. That was nice. Tail of the tape was, look, what was the feel difference in space for you? Did it feel better than the first shot? Ne neutral? Um, <coughs> I would say neutral to the first one felt better than the second one. Loft delivery got worse. And when I say worse, <clears throat> just got higher. Okay. Did that sacrifice our ball speed? No, it didn't. Right? What changed? Our height and our spin rate changed. So look how much tighter this version is, too. Wow. Yeah, so both shafts performed really well when you swung them. That is the leader in the clubhouse. Okay, perfect. So the first shaft can go back in the wall. This is a diet version of the shaft you're playing. <laughs> what do you mean by that? It does kick a little bit differently. So you're playing in your buddy's clubs that he gave you, the Nippon Modus 120 stiff. And that shaft plays pretty f stiff to flex. So this is the Modus 105. So it's a little bit lighter weight profile. A little skinny. That was really chunky. Nope. 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 Oh, for three. That shaft goes back on the wall. <laughs> sometimes is it a golfer? Yeah, sometimes it's a golfer. But <laughs> I know when a shaft looks good before it gets to impact, and that just didn't look like it ever was good. <laughs> oh, see? It's the same head. I handed it to you, and the shaft made the club perform good right away. This is the more important part. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, bro. Go in. I think we got it narrowed down to these two shafts. Excellent. That felt so nice, dude. If I could play that all day. Oh. Yep, this looks good. That's nice. What does it feel like in space, comparatively? Oh, this, better than last one. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, even yeah, your clubs I, might feel better. I mean, than last this one. has felt the best out of all of them. Okay, let's um, see two more. Really good. That's launching high. Yeah, bro. That's nice. Oh, oh. dude, go in. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's go. Yeah, really good. Let's go. Yeah, a little toey there, but it didn't punish you, right? Yep. So when we look at club performance, we're looking at when you don't hit the dead middle of the face, what's the performance, right? Are you getting punished when you hit it there? No. Not really, no, right? No, not at all. So we even raised your launch higher. Now that's maybe the tippy toppy that I want to see the launch angle come out at. 20 is like, that's it, right? But it's like night and day difference, right? All of them go 155 they get there in much different fashion. So it launched even almost a degree higher than the other shaft. Your ball speed increased by a half a mile an hour. Like I didn't go bend this for handed it to you. Yeah. Right. So I have to say, what's the function of that? You did. I mean, you swung it a little bit faster. Not it was really the same. Like you're a pillar of consistency in terms of how fast you swing a seven iron. So I have to say, what gives you the best efficiency at impact? And this one is the best one so far. Sick. Right. So yeah, man, that was Let's really go. good. I that's want you awesome. to swing one graphite for me, and that's it. The next shaft is being hit for twofold reason. <laughs> I won't tell you. Okay. Let's see if you tell feel it. Tell me after. Tell me after. Let's see if you feel it. I feel it, Mm-hmm. 
fine. Good miss. Good miss. It was a little thin. Yeah. I think it's lighter. It is lighter. I wonder what the other thing is. I'm not quite sure what that other okay. thing is. It's dead straight every time. <laughs> it's shorter. It's shorter. Oh. No way. <laughs> Remember I told you you don't have all the shafts at different lengths. We do have some shafts at different cool. lengths. This is a half inch under. Cool. And you didn't notice. No. But with this head, I'm going to go see what the physical measured length is. You actually did thin more shots okay. than the other length. Okay. So not going to put you in half inch short. So no. what changes when you change the length of the golf club? You've hit everything from firm regular to kind of softer stiff profiles. So you actually swung it faster. A okay. shorter club that was lighter, you swung it faster. What good did it do you? Not any good at all because you thinned it more, right? And yeah. your loft delivery was the same, 27.7, right? Your efficiency actually went down. So I think we found the right shaft profile. Gotcha. And I'm not putting you in half inch short golf clubs. Cool. Just so. standard? Standard. So this is the litmus test. We're back to we feel like the best shaft in this head because we're about to move on to the fun part is looking at all these heads. So I want you to have a sense of what this combo really feels like before we move on. And then after that, it's gonna be what, what job interviewee is gonna get the job, right? <laughs> Sick. Guys, so sorry to be interrupting the video, but I just wanted to say that we still have about a week left of the giveaway for the Rogue ST head that me and Zach are giving away. If you're interested, please make sure you subscribe, like this video, and then head on over to my Instagram where you can find the post and the rules. So I, I think only like 150 people have registered for this giveaway, so it's, there's a really, really good chance of winning. So make sure you head on over there if you're interested. I'll have that linked in the description below. All right, back to the video. Hello. There we go. Mm, really good. Mm. That one felt really This is our shaft, nice. dude. Go in. Oh, you hit it too far. That was nice. Oh, that was a good one to end on. That's a good feeling to have moving on to the next part of the fitting. Absolutely. Let's do it. Because now it is just like a sheer numbers game for me. So, told you your ball speed was great. We didn't need to lose any ball speed. I just need some more air underneath it. Well, I ticked those boxes, didn't I? Yeah. We didn't gain half a mile an hour, right? <laughs> yeah. What else is different? We got... That tight little white circle, probably way different. For sure. Yeah. Big, huge red circle. Let's see if I'm really being fair. To I mean, those are your five best. It's not... So what would I want to see different from a fitting perspective? Nothing. That's why I started with this head. Because <laughs> I thought it would probably provide us the best numbers of all the heads we have on the wall over here. So the rest of the fitting for you is like, what flavors taste in the best when you're swinging it? Perfect, I love it. So a treat for you is you're the very first person who gets to hit the new Titleist T-Series of irons. And you're my very first fitting to hit it. So I'll be very interested in the numbers. Very nice, let's see, I'm excited. Thing's pretty. Yeah, bro. You are the very first person to see it and hit it in this hitting bag. That came out nice. Oh, there we go. So it is going a little farther because there's one aspect that is different up there and also different about the golf club as well. Okay. So really good there. Yeah, that one was a nice one. Really good. Good one to end on. That was hit well. So uh, yeah, they're definitely going farther. Now, why is that? So remember when we started i said we're not really supposed to see faster ball speed 108 half yeah well that says 110 why does that say 110 your loft delivery is lower right uh can we agree we kind of just live a little thinny little toey just on average right this whatever reason is coming in a little bit toe down i think when we build the golf clubs i'm gonna say it's standard right the beauty part about lie angles if you get outside and you say mike i'm kind of toe blocking it can you bend these more upright we can bend them I'm kind of digging that heel in. They're kind of going more left than I think they should. I mean, bend them flatter. 
But initially, I think standard, I'd maybe say one flat would kind of where I'd live for your lie angle. So my biggest complaint about your irons before when you walked in was the height and spin. Well, we changed that, right? Ball speed the same, but way higher launch, way more spin, way more stopping power. But now, what's the difference? Well, now our carry distance on average is three yards farther. It's not a lot, but it's, just, it's enough that we have to pay attention to. Why is it three yards farther and on average it's one mile an hour faster? Well, two things happened there. Your loft delivery and impact got stronger, but that club is a stronger loft at seven iron too. So um, this is not like true apples to apples because this is sort of Tideless's offering that is a comp of the 223. Sort of, you're kind of between profiles from Titleist. The other, the other iron that's close in performance in terms of what uh, the first side we started with, I haven't built yet, unfortunately. But for you, did we like the look and feel of that iron any better than the Mizuno 223? Um, not really, I mean, it was about the same, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I, I would say, I think, I think I like the Mizuno's a little better. Okay, that matters. Right? I mean, your height is still fine, 80 feet, 42. But if we're saying what's the absolute best for me, 20 feet higher and 45 is probably better, right? Yeah. So, yeah, if you're interested in hitting it three yards farther, then an iron that is 30 degrees aloft needs to be the iron you play. Mm hmm. Mm, that was really thin. That's the one I've been waiting on. Hello. Nope, it's out. Nice. So this is last year's, the T100S. This is still in the line. I can still get this head. But this kind of gives me a sense of what the replacement would kind of perform like. Because okay. really the performance of this head and the new head are not going to be that much different. Okay. They certainly do look different. They certainly do feel different. But their performance would not really be that much different. Mm hmm Yeah, now we're back. Now we're back. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's shorter toe to heel. This is a little bit smaller. Hello. Oh, that's nice, dude. Yeah, bro. That's really Ooh. nice. Yeah, bro. Got a little shut at the bottom, but that's fine. Pulls go far. Holy crap. Damn. Feels really nice. That was right in the middle, dude. Like, <laughs> can we celebrate? Let's celebrate. <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs> Probably tired of seeing all my, all my toe you misses, huh? It's okay. Bro. Okay. We got a competitor against the 223. Dude. And potentially a new leader. That was look. <laughs> that was really nice. Yeah, good. It gave me a lot of confidence to like really get after it. Your front back dispersion, because you kind of pulled it a little bit. So what's the difference? Well, yeah, it's a little faster coming off. Uh, launch, really good, right? That was my, my biggest complaint when you walked in was your launch. Spin rate is a little bit lower than the Mizuno, but not concerningly so. Cool. Right? And not enough to say, you're not going to hold greens to that iron. Don't play that iron. Right? You swing speed the same. I mean, dots are kissing each other. Right? So your loft delivery with that club is uh, a degree and a half lower. So that's why you're seeing the extra ball speed. Gotcha. Right? Uh, this is not a stronger lofted iron than the 223. It's identical in loft. Um, so when you strike it identical, which is slightly toe side on average, and your loft delivery is that, well, this cl club goes half a club farther. Wow. So that, that's enough to say we got to pay attention to what that iron was doing, right? Um, yeah, that was my biggest complaint is your height and your spin. So we increased both those things with both those irons, right? But it's very difficult to ignore how much more you got out of the T100S than you did the 223. Yeah. So. That one's a contender, bro. I thought like the smaller head would be really intimidating. Tideless is the, like, I still have an ego in my golf game. I got three kids under three. I don't play a lot of golf anymore. I'm still a good ball striker. 
I want forgiveness. Like I was playing CBMBs before I switched to the Titus Iron, but it's the most forgiving performance in a player's cavity iron with the smallest package. Gotcha. Right? It looks like it's hard to hit, but man, it does not perform that way. But you didn't hit every solid shot solid, and it still performs. Yeah. So there's still forgiveness there. So here's the numbers between the two. Very difficult to ignore how much faster the ball comes off the Titleist. It just yeah. does. It does have a bit more tech in it than the 223 does. That's why it comes off a little faster. So we were talking about earlier paying attention to the ball speed is like, is there more tech in it that makes the ball come off faster? Yes. But that's not a fast face iron. That is a, that's an iron that's played on tour in top end of bags of guys that play this game for a living, that iron. So they wouldn't play just a fasty face iron if they didn't think it would be consistent. They play it in four irons. So it's common to see that T100S in a four iron for some of those guys. So um, it's really down to these two. And if we're picking at nits and saying, what do we feel like is better? I think it's six in one hand, half dozen the other in terms of the launches and the spins but it's hard to ignore that ball, how much faster that T100S is. Yeah. Is. There's another flip side of this coin that I haven't even talked about is the new version of that. Okay. Which is a lot closer to that than even the 100S is. Okay. In terms of what it is without you hitting it though. So like you don't have to make a decision today. If you say I'd want to be able to hit that iron before I made a decision. So you're kind of in between models between the T2 and the T150. And I think you're more a T150 guy. Okay. Right? Is, is there any way I could come back and test? Absolutely, dude. A hundred percent. We can do part two. I'd want you to be a hundred percent sure. Like I'm not here to <laughs> force you to buy anything. Thank you. I'm not a commission man. I'm just here to sell people golf clubs they like that they play better golf with. Sweet. I appreciate that, man. So guys, I'm so sorry for kind of leaving you on a cliffhanger, but I think this is the best way to tell the story. So there's three heads left that I've kind of narrowed it down to. And I very much like the two that I got to hit. But the third one is a Titleist T150, which is an iron that's coming out in about a month. Mike had gotten it that same day that I, that I did the fitting, but he just didn't have it ready for me to be able to swing. So pretty much what he said was just like, dude, come back tomorrow, swing all three clubs, and then make the decision then. And, and I very much appreciated it because it very much solidified my decision on the club that I went with. And I don't wanna to give too much away, but I'm just so pumped to get these irons. I Hopefully I'll get them next week and I'll be able to show them to you guys, maybe take them out to the range or, or, or to the course. But yeah, so this video is kinda of gonna be split up into two. The second half where I test, where I came back and test the three heads and finally made the decision. It's gonna come out next Friday as my week 38, okay? And hopefully we can swing the club and, and have some of that footage in there for you as well. With that said, guys, I absolutely love this experience. If you're on the edge of getting fit, I strongly recommend you do. I really wanted to get fit because my clubs never felt very comfortable to me. They always felt heavy. They felt like I was swinging a two by four. It's night and day between the feel of my current irons and the ones that I'm about to get. And so if you're on the edge of getting fit, I strongly recommend you do find yourself a good fitter like I did with, with Mike. And if you're in the DFW area, I think I did the research for you and just head on over to Selinger's in Roanoke and, and Mike will take care of you. But with that said, guys, I hope you guys are playing some awesome golf, shooting low scores, and I'll catch you guys next week. Take care.